Hello and welcome to this brief presentation on Tiger MDSD, our model-driven software development tool. Model-driven software development is a pragmatic approach to the model-driven architecture uh, approach to software design and development. In our current approach, we are only targeting visual models uh, designed in UML. What this means is that you will, as a developer or as a business expert, sit down together and model the domain in a class diagram where you will model each of the entities with the, the hierarchies, the associations and everything. And then when you're done, you will export it into a standard format, XML format for interchanging uh, meta models called XMI. This file will then be loaded into the Tiger MDSD tool and then you will configure the Tiger MDSD to produce the outcome that you want. That could be that you want it to be a Java model, entity model, domain model, call it what you want. Uh, it could be a .NET, C Sharp, Visual Basic .NET model. It could be a Java model that persists using Hibernate or JPA into a database. It could be that you wanted the, the model to be expressed as a, a web service uh, interface using uh, Whistle documents and XML schemas, or it could be a RESTful interface. This transformation or generation process will then uh, finally be written out as code or uh, other configuration files, uh, XML documents. If we take the approach of a Java model, entity, domain model, you will sit down, you will design the model in UML. It could be uh, an insurance application, it could be a real estate application, it could be a veterinary uh, application, like in the example I'm going to show you soon. You'll model it and then when you are done modeling for the day, you'll say, okay, this is how far we can come now. Let's generate, let's see what it looks like, and then let's use it. So first you'll model in UML, then you'll export it to XMI. The XMI will then be read into a meta model in memory. It will then be transformed to Java, but it will still be in memory. So you can query it, you can manipulate it in every way you like. You can enrich it using various extensions. We have a lot of them built in like the JPA persistence, uh, JPA name columns and tables. For instance, if you like join tables to be named in a special way, it could be JPA constraints, it could be bi-directionality, it could be fluent interfaces, validations, history, and so on. There are a lot of extensions that you can use. And then finally, you will write it out as Java source code. So let's go to the UML model for, UML model for this example. This is a fairly basic UML model for a veterinary application. This is modeled in Enterprise Architect, but it could be modeled in, in any uh, UML design tool that you'd like. It could be Magic Draw, Rational Rose Modeler, it could be UModel, Gentleware. There are a lot of choices. We recommend using a UML2 compliant tool because that will give you the best notations and uh, features to choose from. When we're done modeling in here, then we'll select from the project browser the model. We will right click it and we'll choose export and that's not visible in this so I'll just go to the project menu where it will be visible it would have been but just a second I'll move the window up so you can see it project export export to XMI luckily you can, were able to see it we'll just uh, decide for a, a file name that we will export it into I've chosen it to call it model XML I'll put it in the model folder in my Eclipse workspace under a project I created there. I'll turn on right lock and then we'll export and be on our way. All right, let's go to Eclipse. 
Okay, so this is Eclipse where I've set up a Java project to configure uh, the source code ge uh, generation to Tiger MDSD. This is uh, you need to create a Java project which contains this single configuration class. Everything is done in Java. We don't particularly like uh, to do configuration in XML. We might as well do it in Java because it's much easier. You have much better tooling and documentation support and so on. When you've created this configuration class, you can export it as a jar file, which you can then use from anywhere, from a command line, from a batch script, from AND, from Maven, or wherever you like. Uh, you can also use it from Eclipse or IntelliJ. Uh, I prefer to do use it from Eclipse, uh, but that's just a matter of taste. I usually create one project which contains the domain model, which I'll then generate into it and then use it from there. But uh, there are many different ways to do it, and this is just one of them. This example project here, Tiger MGSD demo, is just an all-in-one solution. I both had the generator com uh, configuration here. I have the output folder called generated, which I will use for all the output files from the generation. And also I'll contain the source, the model that we just exported uh, called model XMI. I'll just press F5 to refresh, and then you can see here is the model XML file. I'll just open it up and I'll show you briefly here. That is just a standard XMI file. It's not very readable, but it contains all the information that we need. Okay, now to the configuration. This one is just called demo generator. You can call it whatever you want. The whole purpose uh, and philosophy behind Tiger MDSD that is that you just have a meta model. You take the XMI file in, you pass it up to an in-memory meta model, and from there on you can do whatever you want to it. You can generate uh, whistle documents, XML schemas, .NET code, Java code, um, but you have to specify it somewhere and as I said we prefer to do it in Java code. So here I've created a standard class which has a public static void main, which could take in arguments. In this case, I've just decided to hard code the generated folder and the source, uh, the model.xml. All right, so here I'm configuring up saying I want a JPA Java generator and I want to set an inheritance strategy. That's because JPA, for those of you who know it, uh, has different ways of uh, defining how you map a class hierarchy to database uh, tables. So you need some way of telling this uh, JPA Java generator how you want to do that. I'm just using the default one and it's pretty good for all cases. I also like to say that I like to use an, a map superclass uh, which will define my primary key, my object ID uh, that I can use in uh, my queries. I'll just to show you that none of these entities here uh, contain an ID um, that I can use as primary key in the database. That's because this is defined inside the abstract entity. It's a JPA map superclass with an ID and some different columns that I can use last like update and then, uh, when was it created and so on. It's just a matter of taste. I like to do it this way because it keeps things simple and uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the same to use it uh, from anywhere. I know there's just one primary key and I don't need to specify that in the model everywhere.